Let me give everyone a second to join here. Hi there. <laughs> Good to see everyone. We're just giving everyone a few minutes to join and then um, we'll do our intro and get started. Hi from sunny Western Washington. I saw hi from Cindy. All right. I'm going to go ahead and um, show you guys the project for today and um, introduce the class. So um, I'm Danielle Wicks. I'm content creator for John Bead. And this class is for Michaels. We're doing a bugle bead bracelet. And so we're using the, uh, the John B. check glass bugles and size 10 seed beads. And so this class is going to be recorded and available as a replay. If you can go to michaels.com slash classes for the replay, it'll be up tonight or tomorrow morning. And um, during the class, uh, the um, students are on mute. But if you have a question, you can drop it in the chat and we have um, uh, you know, a way to answer them during the real time. Uh, let's see what else. Um, yeah, any questions you have in the chat? There is a handout for this class, a PDF that we've got going and um, it was emailed. If you didn't get the email, let us know. I think we can also put that in the chat. And uh, if we'll give everyone a few more minutes and we'll get started on uh, showing how to do the project. Um, there, there is a variation of this project that this weekend I was just playing and I made some earrings. So this is the bugle bead bracelet, 20 rows of it with fringe at the end. And so um, I thought that was neat. So I did a little handout for that too. And that'll be in the chat. A little treat for everyone joining today. Let me talk a little bit about that. And then at the end of class, we're gonna introduce the September lineup. So everything we have planned for September which I'm really excited about. So looking forward to showing you guys that. Okay, so let's see, we've got about, we've got a good group here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, once again, I'm Danielle Wicks, I'm content creator for John Bead. And this is our, our class for Michael's Bugle Bead Bracelets. Very fun project, very easy. The technique is called four drop peyote. And it's made by stringing on bugle beads and size 10 seed beads in a row and then treating those four size 10 seed beads, which are about the same height as a bugle bead, treating them as a bead, just as a single bead for the purposes of doing an even count peyote stitch. So if you guys are ready, I'll turn to the mat here and we'll get started. Okay. Give this a minute to focus. And an earring here is our focus test. What do you guys think of that? Pretty good? And so it gets going. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put the project here for you guys to see. This is the bracelet. And what we're gonna do is start building the first rows in even count what's called four drop peyote. One of the beads is a bugle bead and the other bead is four size 10 seed beads. And so I'm gonna be using this gorgeous red color. There are a lot of very gorgeous colors of bugle beads to show you a, a quick snapshot of them. I was just like in color wonderland when I saw these, they're so pretty. And um, We'll work with the red today because I think the red is really nice on camera. Seems to be oh, this color. <laughs> I just think it's just so bright, so neat looking. The thread we're using today is the Wildfire, the 0 .006. And I'm using size 10 hard beading needles. And to cut the thread, I'm using these precision scissors. And all of these, um, you know, the search numbers for, for Michaels are in the, um, 
the class email, and in the class handout. All right, and so to get started, um, usually just a working length of thread. This is one of those projects where you're going to be adding thread in a bracelet of this length. I added thread four times. So we're definitely going to cover adding thread. And so that means for getting started, whatever a comfortable length of working thread is for you, it's going to be great. And so I'm going to go ahead and just for me cut about 36 inches. Let's see. And this is again a size 10 hard beading needle and thread that. It helps to thread these needles with the wildfire if you flatten it first. And you can either do that with your fingernail or with a pair of chain nose pliers. And it'll flatten out just enough that you can get it through the eye of the needle. And last week I had one of them that was not going in. I remember I switched it. I think I picked up that same needle today. Switching to a new one here. So for anyone else that's struggling to thread these there, definitely tricky, they're tight. And so once the needle is threaded, the good thing about that is it's not gonna pull loose when you're working. A lot of times if you're working fast, you can pull the needle right off the thread and then have to rethread it in the middle of your work. So let's see here. How is the light for everyone? Are you thinking? Um, so I'm seeing a question about the earrings. Yep, we're going to definitely be showing that. Um, there is a PDF for it, and it'll be in the chat room. Light's good. Okay, great. There's some glare. Yeah, I'm seeing that glare too, and so I was curious if I could get that to go away. I might try. Try some warmer light. Yeah, that's definitely more glare than we want. So I'm going to turn that off. Okay, that was a little better. All right, so to get started, you'll want to pick up a bugle bead and four size 10 seed beads. A bugle bead, and then again four size 10 seed beads. And someone in um, earlier asked me if 11s would work, and I think one of the best things to do for that is to test it out and maybe try five 11s if you wanted to try that. But so, so far we've added a bugle, four 10s, a bugle and four 10s, and add another bugle bead. and four more tens. Okay, and I'm leaving um, about 15 inch tail or so. So the next step is to pick up one bugle bead. Skip those four, we're treating that as one bead in, in peyote stitch. We're gonna go through just the next bugle and pull. All right, pick up another bugle bead, skip the four beads, and go through the bugle bead. And what I'm doing here is I'm pulling the working thread and the tail thread apart to make those sit side by side like that. And so one more bugle bead skip those four tens and go into the next bugle bead. All right. 
And so if your beads have turned, remember the seed bead is going to be on your left and the row of bugles on the right, my left and my right. So you guys can see that there. And so now I'm going to start picking up four tens, four size 10 seed beads, go through the next bugle bead. So you see how I was exiting from this one and I turned. And I'm going through the up bead, which is that next bugle bead there. And hold tight. Okay. And again, four tens. Go through the next bugle bead here. And pull tight. Okay, and four more size 10 seed beads. And I want to go through the bugle bead. See how he flipped a little bit. So I'm going to flip that back over. Go through there. All right. And so the way this has worked is every two rows will be the same. So if you're working with the the seed beads, it'll be another row of seed beads. So we're going to put four tens here, here, and here. And then we're going to start with two rows of bugles, then two rows of tens, then two rows of bugles. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this row in the next one so I can show that transition. And then I'm going to start over and show the beginning one more time. So this is that second row of tens, and I'm going into the other size 10 seed beads that were there as my up beads. As you can see there's a spot for it here. Go through there. All right. And then adding a bugle, turning around the other direction. Add a bugle bead. Same thing. Go through there. And go through the next. And so that, that is the pattern that you'd follow for the whole bracelet. Add bugle, 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 and then we'd start with the tens again. So what I'm thinking I might do next is um, I was going to switch to start a new strand. And I might actually switch the color too. So you guys can see a different color for the second one. So this blue is very gorgeous. This is called peacock blue. It is the color that I used in the sample earring. And I used it with this brown iris size 10, which is called porcupine brown. And the number on that is 0242 is the last four digits on the SKU for that. And these size six beads at the bottom are the iris size six, the blue iris. Okay, so here we go with, thank you. Yeah, that blue, I am really excited with this blue color. When I first saw it, I knew we were going to be friends. Okay, so I'm cutting another length of wildfire thread. This is the 0 0.006 wildfire. And just a comfortable working length, 30, 36 inches or so. And as I was saying before that, we will definitely end up adding thread. Um, if you do the bracelet, you'll need to add thread about four times. This is um, a hard beading needle, a size 10 hard beading needle. It's worked on one strand. And so the first step is to pick up one bugle, four size 10 seed beads, one bugle bead, 
Oops, there we go. And four tens. One bugle. Four more tens. And leave about a 15 inch tail. Now pick up one bugle bead. <laughs> Chase them around on the mat here. There we go. Skip the four tens and go through the next bugle bead. So you guys see this is just even count peyote. The easiest stitch with just a little modification of treating those four seed beads as one bead. And someone also asked me once if you could do this with all bugles. Yeah, totally. And it's, you know, look gorgeous, even mixing up the colors. Um, so I'm going to skip these four size tens. Go through the next one. The next bugle bead. And when I'm working with this, um, when I'm not on camera, I'm actually holding it in both of my hands, but I'm doing this on the mat just so you guys can see how everything lays out. And what I'm doing at the end of each ad is kind of pulling apart the working thread and the tail thread to tighten it up. So one more bugle bead, skip those four tens, go through the next bugle bead, and pull tight. Okay. And I'm just going to turn this like that so that the seed beads are on the outside. And now I'm going to add four size 10 seed beads here. And go through the bugle bead that's raised there. Turning and going that other direction. And the bugle bead again. I'm sorry, four tens, not a bugle bead. Getting ahead of myself there. Go through there. And go through the next. All right, so there's the first three rows. And now I'm going to turn and add four more tens. Starting row four here. And four more tens. And the last set of tens here. And so this pattern is two rows of seed beads, two rows of bugles, two rows of seed beads until the end. So at this point I would add a bugle. Another bugle bead. And one more bugle bead. All right. And the same thing on the way back for the next row, but just bugles. And so that is the whole stitch. You'll notice that uh, as you start working, it uses a lot of thread and it uses a lot of those size 10 beads. But you'll have leftover bugles at the end.
and add one more and then we can do we can switch to adding thread and finishing or I can go through that one more time what do you guys think of start it one more time or go on to showing finishing hi Danielle it's Carmi from the sidebar hey, Carmi. Um, uh, so far uh, people seem to be following along so you're doing well um, people have asked how long you think it would take to do the full bracelet um, probably uh, you know about two hours okay and do you have um, any recommendations on thread color oh uh, yeah any color you like I'm using black so that it's the best one to be seen on camera but I also have the wildfire in green and I use that on this and the green looked really pretty in here um, I believe it's also available in white and gray so I think just playing around with what you like and what you think looks good. You can see the green there really popped with this design. Well, I think we're doing great for time. So you, you, have, you can try it one more time for anybody who arrived late, but people are actually quite interested to see how you end it as well. Okay, so maybe go through it one more time, just a little bit fast. And, uh, and then if we, um, we get time, I can show the step again at the end if anyone needs to see that too. Okay. So um, again, I'm cutting about a good working length, say like 36 inches or so of the wildfire beading thread 0.006. This is a size 10 beading needle. And I flattened the end to try to make it easier to thread it. Here we go. And it's thick. It's a really thick thread. Once I get it through, I have to, I have to pull it a little bit. But it's good. I always enjoy having something that doesn't let the needle get lost. Okay, so there's that. And so this stitch starts with picking up one bugle, four seed beads. These are size 10 seed beads. I'm using the John Bead Check Glass seed beads. This color is, um, it's an iris brown, and this is the peacock blue in the bugles. And I left a 15 inch tail on this thread. So there's bugle four size 10 seed beads, bugle, four more size 10 seed beads, and another bugle. And I'm just gonna add four more size 10s. And then picking up another bugle bead, turning, skip those first 10s, skip those first 10s there and go through the next bugle bead. And pull tight. And a trick to making it tighter is to pull the working thread and the tail thread apart. There we go. And that should stack really nicely. Picking up another bugle bead, skipping those four and going through the next bugle bead. And pulling tight. One more bugle, skip the four tens, and going through the last bugle. And I see the question there about, absolutely, yeah, you can make it thinner. This is a really thick bracelet. See, it's, you could make it, um, as long as you stay even count, which you know you don't have to, you could do an odd count if you want, but an even count one of say like four would be good. I just kind of felt like a statement, you know, piece was in order for fall. For fall, I always like to kind of make the jewelry just a little bigger. So there I finished rows one, two, and three. And now I'm gonna add four size 10 seed beads into each of these gaps.
going through the bugle bead here with the four size 10 seed beads. There we go. Four more size tens. Four size tens. All right. And so that's the pattern. Then you would do four more tens. Sorry. Yeah, four tens to one, two, three times. And you start with bugle, 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 and so on. So if everyone's good at that, I think what I'll do now, next is switch to showing how to finish, um, which we'll start with adding thread. Let me get these out of the way really quick. At the end of these classes, I have a pile of beads here. <laughs> you guys will be like, whoa, that's a lot of beads. It's fun, I just scoop them all up. Okay, so here's a sample I did earlier, and I started running short of thread. I'll bring that down a little bit. You can see I've got about eight inches left on that strand. So I'm going to cut a new working length of thread. I always leave the old strand in place so I can remember where I left off. And flatten that guy there. Thread your new needle. There we go. Okay, so it doesn't matter where in the work you enter the work, but you're going to want to change direction three times, and then your thread will be locked. And I'll show it. I'll show that. So I'm just guessing. I'm just going to go here. And pull through. And so the way peyote stitch works is you can just keep going diagonally into the next bead below to weave in. You can see my tail is still moving. The tail of the new thread that I'm adding, still moving whenever I pull through here. If your old working thread gets in the way, just um, pull that out. Okay. And now I'm going to change direction and I want to show you guys what happens when I do that. So here's the tail of the new thread that I've added. It's this one right here. And it's still moving. I've gone through three sets of beads and it's still moving. I can still pull it a lot. But look what happens when I change direction. So I'm going to switch and go through this bugle here. I can't even get it to move, and that was just one turn. Oh, so these these beads are amethyst. Yeah, and these this color here is like a uh, it's like a cobalt blue. The name of it, I believe, is called peacock blue. The last two digits on it are two ten. Sorry, last three digits are two ten. Okay, so adding the thread here, change direction one time, already that tail is locked. But I'm going to just go ahead and turn this way one more time, mainly just because I need to get over here so that I'm exiting the same place as my old working thread. And I'm going to turn. There we go. Okay, and so now all I have to do is just follow my thread path. I've changed direction three times. The new thread is locked in. Let me just go through a set of beads here, a set of beads here. Tighten that up. Go through here. Okay, and unhook that. There we go. Now I'm in position to turn and start adding my next rows. This tail right here, I can trim that now. And one really good way to trim, push down with your scissors, pull up with a thread. And 
And so I would just start adding bugles now, which I'm going to do. You guys can get a look at that gorgeous amethyst. Really pretty. In this color, you can pair it with anything because it's one of those colors that's like a chameleon. Whatever you put it next to, because it's transparent, especially if you use a dark thread, it's going to turn into that color, but accent it with like a little bright contrast. And so this is in my toolbox. I always have this color, a transparent amethyst, no matter what kind of bead I'm talking about. It's just, I think it's one of my most favorite colors because it can become any color in any piece of work that you create. Yeah, and so you guys can see just how easy this is to do. And what I would do now is I would add another two or three rows and then take the old working thread and weave it into those new rows and trim it. And so I'm thinking I'll show you guys that and then I'll show you adding the closure. So I'm going to go super speed here for just a second. This is a great time for questions if anyone has any. Danielle, do you do any other crafts? Oh, yeah, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I've had to tone it down lately because I've had a, a lot of bead, you know, bead focus lately, but I sew, I do crochet. I used to be obsessed with crochet. I made sweaters and so many things. I also love scrapbooking and just everything. <laughs> Pretty much any kind of craft, you name it. I was into making wreaths for a while. I made a bunch for my mom it was a little while ago. She still has them though. Okay, so here's my fourth row since I added thread. And so one of the cool things about this stitch is you're only adding three, essentially three beads per row. It does go pretty fast. When I say two hours, I'm probably, I'm including the clasp and everything in that. But it, you know, it's one of those ones where you set it aside, you, you work on it a little bit. And go do something else, come back, work on it a little bit. And the next day you've got a finished bracelet. And it's kind of a wow piece because it's one of those ones that people look at it and they're like, wow, that must have taken you forever. And you can let them think that if you want. Okay, so now I'm going to weave in the old working thread. Switching back to that. Okay. I'll just do that really fast if everyone caught, you know, the gist of just changing direction three times. So there's, I'm going to go change once. And go through another set here. One more. And I'm going to switch back. And it doesn't really matter which bead you choose to go through. Just whichever one, you know, the needle goes through easier. Sometimes that's just how I choose it. All right. I'm going to trim that. Pushing down with the scissors, pulling up with the thread. And you got it. So now I'm going to show you how to end, how to end it. And on the pattern handout, it ends with one row of seed beads after a row of bugles. So just really quickly, I'm going to throw the extra bugle rows on so that it will match what you have in the handout. But that said, you could throw the clasp on at any spot. So there's one row of bugles. Here comes the second one.
And one more bugle. Okay, now one row of seed beads. It's one. Okay, so from here, pick up four more seed beads. And don't worry, I've got two sides. I'm gonna do this twice. So just uh, follow along best you can here. So there's four. I'm gonna turn and go back through that bugle in the opposite direction. Now turn again and go through those four seed beads that we just added. And while you're doing that, go ahead and give this working thread a, a tug from the, the side that's exiting the bugle, just to make sure it's nice and tight. There you go. And now what I did is I strung 19. This number can be a number that you like. It doesn't have to be the same as what I'm doing. You can just test it and see what looks good because sometimes the seed beads are just a little different shape or size than whatever count looks good with the bead you're using totally fine. This part is, is kind of up to you, but as a, just as a guideline, because it helps to have a number to start with. I went with 19, three, four, five, six, here's seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13. All right. Okay. And so whatever clasp you're using, if you have a jumpering and which I'm going to use today is just a lobster claw and a jumpering. The, um, the part number for these is also in the email. There's lobster claw. I'm going to use some chain nose pliers to open and close a jumpering around it. And um, I'm using a pair of bent nose just to open and close jump rings. I like to do that. You can use a regular chain nose if you want. Everybody's kind of got their style there. And so opening that laterally, I'm pulling off these extras, they were attached to it. Attach the lobster claw. And close. And so I just go through the jump ring. If you had a different kind of closure and it was one that the sea beads didn't fit through, you'll need to divide that in half, maybe add an extra one or so. But this slides right over, so I just strung them all. So now go through the four sea beads at the end here. And there you go. So now we're just gonna loop around to reinforce it. So all I'm doing now is weaving to get back in the position. So turn here. And go ahead and just come up and go through the loop again. Come down through the other side and go through those four on the edge that we added. Okay. Now I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna turn and go through this bugle bead. And then just go back up through, reinforce it one more time. And at this point, you'll have had three passes through those 19 size 10 seed beads and they will be starting to get a little tight. That's good. But that is probably the last pass I could get through that. And now I'm gonna go through these four again. Okay, turn, go through the bugle and now I'm just weaving in. It's gonna change direction a few times. And that is it. And I'll show you guys one more time that on the other side. 
with just a jump ring. But right now what I'm doing is just weaving in, changing direction. On the handout, I think I, I put a pretty complex thread path for weaving it in, but you can weave in anywhere you'd like. It's also a great time to reinforce stitches that if you feel like they were too loose, you can use this as an opportunity to do that. Okay. And trim, pushing down with the scissors, pull up with a thread. Yeah. I saw a little closure there. Okay, I'm going to thread a needle on the other side here and show you guys finishing one more time. We're doing good. It's about 141. Danielle, if yes. you could just take your time on threading the needle, somebody would like a, a, a little bit of a slower needle threading demonstration. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier I was kind of sweating it because it felt like it was taking a long time, but I'm hoping that's helpful. <laughs> so what I do, and what you could, you, you can also take your pliers and flatten wildfire. Flatten it a lot. I know this can be one of the most frustrating parts of bead weaving. And so it's really thin now. This is a, the kind of thread that can be molded and shaped. And so it'll go a lot easier through the eye of the needle. If you're having trouble with one side, flip the needle around and see if maybe the other side's better. And if all else fails, switch to another needle. Sometimes you get a bad needle. All right, and once it finally goes through, I'm gonna pinch and pull it through. And you'll notice that that's, that's tight. I'm really kind of, I'm really pulling on it. But this, this uh, wildfire is, you know, it's a thick thread. And so it lends itself really nicely to holding the shape of your stitches. And it makes it a little more challenging thread. So it's a trade-off, but I think it's worth it. Okay, so then um, I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna zip through the closure on this, you know, one time since we did that earlier. I'm picking up four size tens and going the opposite direction through that bugle bead. And pull tight. I come back through those four. And pick up 19 C beads. And if you don't, um, you know, if you don't have a, you know, a, a jump ring that you're going through, you're using another kind of clasp that will not fit over the seed beads. After nine, go ahead and add your clasp here and then add the other 10. And also the reason I'm doing 19 instead of like 20 or 21 is because this, there's no center point on even count. So you end up with one side that's just a tad longer than the other. And that's why the extra bead, no one would notice that about me. Me and maybe some other folks out there. I don't know. But as I said, don't sweat it. Whatever number looks good to your eyes, the great number. Okay. And so I'm going to get another jump ring really quick. One here. It's not closed, so I'm going to close it. And I find my pliers. I hid them for myself. There we go. So I'm just going to wiggle this jump ring closed. That click is good. Go through the jump ring. Come through these four. Turn through the beagle bead that's below. And now I'm going to go through all 19 again. This color is, it's almost like a sapphire. It's cobalt meets sapphire meets awesome. 
really like it. Okay. That turning through the bugle. One more pass through there. Coming up. In this last pass, it's going to be tight. Um, but don't worry, it's it's good. If it helps to flip the work, sometimes I do that. There we go. All through, through all four of those on the side. And there you go. Now just weaving in. That's all we have left to do. So I'm going to go through the bugle bead. Maybe through these four. And these were my starter rows, so you can see where those starter rows are always going to be a little bit looser than your end rows. So this is a great chance to make them tighter by weaving in over them. Danielle, a couple of mm -hmm. people have wondered, would you ever do a double row on that final? Um, a double row. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would be great for a button, too. That'd be a really nice button closure idea. I think that would be great. I think sometimes when I'm, when I'm designing for the classes, I go for what's most easily repeatable. But um, gosh, I would love to see if someone decides to do one of those, I'd love to see it because that sounds really great. So I love about beading. It's like, there's so many ideas, so many great things that you can try and everybody's originality can come out and shine. And there you go. That's all there is to it. And you've got a great bracelet. You intrigued everybody with the earring option. And I yes. know you didn't do a PDF for it, <laughs> but could you tell them how you would go from this to doing an earring? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I'm going to pull back the sample that I had from earlier that we were doing earlier. And so what you would do with this is you would make 20 rows. So here you see we've got one, two, three, four, five. We have six rows on here. You do 20. And so it would be about that thick. And then add fringe. And the way to add the fringe is exiting from your last bead, you'd pick up some seed beads, pick up a size six seed bead, one more small seed bead, come back up through and change direction and then come back down and add more fringe, come back up, change direction, come back down. And what you would get, it's just a really cool design. Go all the way to the end. The counts on this is 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. There's two 15s in the center. And then you go back to 13, 11, 9, 7. Then bring your thread all the way up the side and build this, which is 10 size 10 seed beads, a six, four size tens, down through the six again, add tens. And from here, you would just weave, go here and down and over and up. So you can come back up this way, looping around, come down, do the same thing here, go down one, one, and up. Reinforce it that third time and then weave in. And then you'd have a matching set. Danielle, another question you're getting is, how do you decide um, the length based on your wrist size? Oh, um, so, for, for me, I just try it on, but you can also put it on one of those, those testing boards, you know. Um, I would give you guys row counts, but what I found is some serious variation in my tension can make those row counts less reliable. So a tighter tension, see this is almost like a little accordion. If you were to try to measure it, I can make it shorter or I can make it longer. <laughs> so what I did is I used one of those boards where you kind of you form it around the board and set it in there to get a good measure. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? They're, they're at Michael's, they have circles on them and you set the bracelet inside. I'm trying to remember what they're called now. They're almost like the necklace boards, but they're shaped with all the, the wrist sizes listed on them. You could also use one of those cones, those wrist cones. 
Um, but this is definitely one of those hands-on measure. It's you could lay it flat and measure it with a with a rope, and you could you could try for some counts, but so it's so organic that that's it'd be kind of in there in a it would be a guess, I think. Hope that answered it. Perfect. All right. And anything else anybody would like to see while I'm on the mat? They are, they are curious about your colors, and I know you made several versions of it, so I'm glad yeah. you're showing them. Oh, yeah. So um, the version we are working with for finishing had amethyst, and it was mixed with this beautiful peacock blue. And then these colors have the peacock blue bugle beads and these brown iris called porcupine brown. Those are really gorgeous together. And then earlier I was using the ruby, with the ruby tons. And even though it, um, on camera, there's a little bit of a glare going on, which I didn't notice in the earlier, but it's, it's making this look a lot more transparent than it does in person. In person, it's got real depth to it. It's really gorgeous. Uh, and last but not least, my pumpkins. <laughs> These guys were orange with the ivy mix, poison ivy mix. And I pulled these orange size six seed beads out of the size six tangerine mix. But really what you should just do is go to Michael's and get all of the colors because, because need, right? <laughs> Keep them with a very big bag. Danielle, we're great for time today. So okay. you definitely brought us to a great point. Um, we have eight of your classes now are recorded and on the Michael site. And I thought today you were going to probably give us an advanced peek of what's coming for September. Oh yes, I am excited to do that. Can you switch back? Okay, so September. <laughs> and I'm a one-year wonder. Hang on guys. Here we go. I didn't realize that. September is all about super duos. So super duo September. Starting with the 8th, September 8th, we're going to do the earrings. This is the beginner version of the earring. But one of the really cool things you can do with this earring is turn it into statement by creating several fans and attaching it like that. And so the handout covers how to do that. And then the next class is a fan necklace. This is really cute. It's very art deco. It can be made in any colors. I made these in kind of fall colors, but there's a beautiful turquoise version that you guys will see if you register. That's the sample that you'll see in the photo photography. I put charms on this one. There's a bunch of new charms at Michael's right now. There's this one that has a rose and a cactus in it. I throw the rose on here. I thought that was gorgeous. Class after that, puffy star pendant. How cute is this? It's a 3D pendant. And you can use any kind of cord. You can use leather, ball chain. Um, you can make a chain for it. It's reversible. You can use different colors. And none of these are difficult. These are all really, really easy. And we're going to go over them. Um, I can make the, all three of these can be made in the class time. So it's not one where I have to make the sample ahead like many of our classes have been. This one you'll see start to finish how to do these because they don't. They take less than an hour. This one is the button bracelet. It is one that it takes a little longer be just because you know you're building a whole bracelet. But we'll finish a couple buttons in class. This is just Super Duo beads. That's all it is. Super Duo is made into a button. And Super Duo is stitched into a chain. Yeah. So lots of cool things. All, um, all, all the colors are in the handouts that will come for these. So you can see which colors were used and of course when you get there to the store and you see all the other colors. Try your own combos, share them, at, um, hashtag make it with Michaels. And yeah, so I'm really excited for September. Does anyone have any questions about those? I would say 
definitely stock up on some super duos because we're going to go crazy with the super duos in September. All right, and so um, it seems like there's no no more questions. So, um, yeah, so I'll just wrap it up. Um, thank you for joining us for the bugle beads, earrings, and bracelets. If you guys make a version of these, please share it. Hashtag make it with Michaels. Um, tag John Bead. I'd love to see what you guys make. All right. And on that note, I'm looking forward to September and hope to see you guys all back and have fun creating. Bye.